Stephanie Brown and Martha Corrales are sometimes known as the A-team around campus. They visit the homes of kids who miss school and are failing. This is not an easy job. Martha and I went on a home visit about a month ago and it was pretty dire. There, were, there was no flooring in the home, there was no furniture in the home. Um, there, I, I would question whether or not they even had running water. Gentlemen, let's go, let's go. Now you're going to be late. On the surface, Lincoln High School in southeast San Diego is one of the nicest schools in the county. It was built four years ago to replace this small, 50-year-old, outdated building. Before the old school was demolished, 300 students attended. When the new school opened its doors in 2007, 2,300 students enrolled. The state-of-the-art, $120 million campus did what it was supposed to do attract kids to school. But keeping them in class and making sure they pass state and federal exams has proven more difficult. Good morning, ladies. Mel Collins is principal of Lincoln High. I, I think the biggest thing, Joanne, is uh, that, they, that they want to be here. Lincoln has been put on notice by federal officials for its failing grades in English and math. It also has one of the lowest attendance rates in the San Diego Unified School District. So what's a school to do? This school decided to go into the homes of the kids who are truant most often to find out why they're not at school. What Martha Corrales and Stephanie Brown learned surprised even them. This child, you know, did not have his father. His father um, passed away and he actually witnessed his father dying. She was in coming of school and she was failing pretty much. At, she, I think she had straight F's and 1D at that mm -hmm. point. When her older daughter said, you know, just tell her some of the things we face, um, she said, you know, she's hungry all the time. I have another young man who cares for his father who's on dialysis. He's pretty sick and he's pretty, the, pretty much the primary caregiver for his dad. So three days a week he has to get dialysis and this kid misses school three days a week. So then we find this young man pretty much alone, you know, and with grandpa passed away. And We've been on another home visit where um, it wasn't in a livable condition and we knew the family was living that way and and the the smell in the house was so strong it was difficult for us to be in there so we know that our kids have a lot of financial hardship according to government statistics more than 80 percent of the students at this school are eligible for the free and reduced lunch program that means most families live at or around the poverty level Corrales, Brown, and Collins often spend their own money to help students get to class. They pay for bus passes, groceries, pants for a student who had none. They've even paid for college entry fees and health insurance. <laughs> Collins believes the best way to get kids to class is to make a personal connection, one student at a time. And I think if you were to ask uh, most kids on high school campuses or in school campuses, why do you come? A lot of them would say it's about him or her or about this or that or whatever the case might be. His philosophy seems to be working, slowly. Attendance has increased at Lincoln since last year and the school's academic performance on state exams is also creeping up. But the change may be too slow. Budget cuts will eliminate Mel Collins and Martha Corrales' positions in the next school year. But Corrales says even if she leaves the school, she won't leave behind her 100 students. I'll stay in touch with them, and if I can support them in any way, I will.